Okay, next I'm going to be doing the um, medication administration through an NG tube, so enteral um, medication. Now with the uh, medication administration through an NG tube, that medication um, either has to be in a liquid form or it has to have the um, ability to be crushed. So you don't want to use medications that are um, extended action or um, long acting because you can't crush those because they are released at a certain amount of time. So if there is an instance where you need to have that medication um, switched um, because it's a long acting, then you would contract, consult with your provider and they can hopefully either change that to a form that's usable through an NG tube. Also um, with enteric coated, uh, medications, you can't crush those either. They're enteric coated for a reason. So make sure before you're deciding to give um, any of your medications through the NG tube that it's the proper form and that they can be crushed or if they come in a liquid form. All right, so again, we have our patient with the NG tube in and we verified placement and we did that by either measuring the external um, length of the tube as it as it exits as it exits the nares, and um, that should correlate with what is in the um, chart as far as when the patient had that NG tube placed and they did an X-ray to verify that it was in the stomach. We could also do the pH of the uh, stomach acid, um, so that's another way. So whatever your facility um, has as a policy. Next, we want to again make sure that we're assessing the patient. Um, assessing the nares, we're looking at skin integrity and the integrity of the um, mucous membranes inside the nostrils and we're also doing our GI assessment before we give the medications and if our medications just like if you were giving them orally if you are giving any medication that requires a assessment prior to giving it make sure you do that so if I'm giving this patient um, Capitin I want to make sure that I'm checking that patient's um, blood pressure um, and if it warrants also doing you know a heart or cardiac assessment as well. I'm giving uh, acetaminophen so that also requires me to ask the patient if they're having pain and to do my pain assessment um, on that patient. If the acetaminophen is given for um, a fever, again, that would be the assessment you want to do before giving it. Then you want to do post assessments um, to follow up with that. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my tube is um, patent so I can administer medications through it. And like I said, I'm using this as the simulation since the mannequin cannot tolerate um, enteral feedings or, or medications going into it. So I'm just going to do hand hygiene. And this will also be performed um, by gravity as well. All right. And we do have a pad underneath um, the area so that in case we have any spillage that it doesn't get on the patient or the bed. Okay, so again I have my tube. It's not connected to suction. Um, both of these medications do not necessarily need to be on an empty stomach nor do they need to be given with food. So I'm going to go ahead and just as I I'm just going to give them right now. Um, I also checked them all three times with my MAR and I have all my medication checks done as far as that goes and they are also crushed and already diluted. So when you're giving medications through an NG tube, you do have to dilute them. You can't just put the powder down the tube that you've crushed. You have to make sure you're diluting it with you know, 5 to 15 mLs of fluid. If the patient is on a fluid restriction, you're going to have to figure that out. Um, sometimes there are patients limited to only so much um, free water, uh, especially during your shift. So you have to account for all of that when you're giving medications because you're, you're using um, sterile water or tap water as per policy, whichever your facility uses, and you have to um, figure that in with their intake. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start off by just uh, flushing the tube to make sure it's patent. And we're going to do this by gravity. So we'll remove this stopper here. <clears throat> and we'll put our 60cc syringe on the exit of the tube. And we have our 30cc initial flush. And as you can see, we kind of hold it upright too so that gravity can help it. Okay, 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and clamp the tube. I'm just gonna pull this off. You could keep just pouring the medicines in, but since I have powder forms, they kind of settle at the bottom. So I'm just gonna to wanna to mix this one up a little bit before I give it. <clears throat> and make sure that all your medication, um, the medication container is labeled appropriately for which medication you're giving. All right, so we're gonna to wanna to pour that one in. Okay, so we have all that in. So we'll let that go in per gravity. And then we do have to flush after each medication is administered. So I'm gonna flush in between with 15 mLs. Again, always look at your policies. <clears throat> All right, and then finally we have our Tylenol that we're giving. And sometimes it might settle, so just kind of swish it around a little bit before you pour the rest of it in so that you get all your medication in. And we'll let that go in. Okay, and then our final flush of 30 mLs. This just clears the tubing. Make sure nothing's getting stuck in there. And so we'll let that go in as well. All right. So this one isn't quite going in all the way because of our simulation thing here. So we're getting it to go right now. There we go. Okay. So now we're done with our medication administration. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the stopper on it here. All right. And again, make sure I clamp it for at least 30 to 60 minutes to make sure that those get absorbed before I go ahead and put that to suction if it was going to suction. So that completes our medication administration through the enteral feeding tube, the NG tube. And we're gonna go ahead and just wash our hands. Put that there. And we're gonna make sure the patient has all the safety checks in place, bed is locked and low, call light is present and accessible and our table will be at the patient's bedside and we'll have all the alarms set as necessary on the bed. And that's it.